What does human blood look like under the microscope? Does blood taste salty or sweet? Today, I will continue to prick my finger to show you. Let's explore the truth about blood under the microscope with Tolo. Now, I will proceed to take your blood. Oh no. I'm really scared of that sharp needle, it looks quite scary. I will try to use this lancet instead. It also hurts a bit, but I seem to be less scared than using a syringe. Oh, that's a drop of blood worth $6 million, it's flowing so much, please don't try this at home. I will put the drop of blood on a glass slide for examination before it dries out. Wow, at a magnification of 100 times, we are observing hundreds of thousands of blood cells in just one drop of blood. For those who don't know, blood is a mobile tissue, composed of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. Blood circulates throughout the body thanks to the contraction of the heart, which generates a pressure that can propel blood up to 9 meters high. In the body of an adult, there is about 5 to 6 liters of blood. Imagine if you pour 1.5 liters of coke into a bottle, you would need 4 bottles to contain all the blood in your body. The amount of blood in the body makes up about 8% of the total body weight. But here's a fascinating fact. It takes about 1,120,000 mosquitoes to suck all the blood out of an adult human body. So, how much blood is in a child's body? Now, I'll show you how to calculate the amount of blood in the body using this formula. For adults, 70 milliliters per kilogram of body weight. For children, 80 milliliters per kilogram of body weight. Pregnant women usually have 35% to 50% more blood than non-pregnant women. Please leave a comment with your body weight, and let's calculate how much blood you have in your body. I will check to see if your calculations are accurate. Now, I'll increase the magnification to 400 times, and we can see the blood cells flowing through the bloodstream. White blood cells look like coronaviruses, with spikes on the outside like sea urchins. One drop of blood contains about 10,000 white blood cells and 250,000 platelets. Half a liter of blood contains about 24 trillion red blood cells. They form a system that helps transport oxygen from the lungs throughout the body, then receives CO2 and brings it back to the lungs to be released. Afterwards, the blood continues to transport waste products to the kidneys, an organ that filters the blood and removes waste through urine. Blood also helps protect the body and fight against viruses and bacteria. At the same time, it also helps regulate body temperature. For example, when we engage in strenuous work or exercise that causes the body to heat up, the blood vessels dilate to allow more blood to flow through, and the cold blood carries body temperature when flowing through areas with high temperatures to help balance it out. This also explains why our faces turn red when we work hard. Next, we will explore the components in a drop of blood. In the blood, plasma accounts for 55%, and the remaining 45% is made up of blood cells. Specifically, red blood cells, accounting for 96%, they contain the pigment hemoglobin and no nucleus or organelles. The mission of red blood cells is to transport oxygen from the lungs to tissues, and receive carbon dioxide from tissues back to the lungs for disposal. Red blood cells are self-destructed in the liver and spleen after a lifespan of approximately 120 days. It takes only 30 seconds for a red blood cell to travel around the body, about 161,000 kilometers. Bone marrow is responsible for producing new red blood cells. White blood cells, accounting for 3%, they play a crucial role in the immune system by attacking infectious agents and launching immune responses in the body. White blood cells are not only found in the blood but also in tissues to carry out their protective function. Pus in wounds is made up of dead white blood cells. Platelets, accounting for 1%, they function in blood clotting. If the body is injured, platelets and plasma contact with air will produce a chemical that forms long protein fibers like ropes. These fibers will bind red blood cells together to create a protective barrier that prevents blood from leaking out. Later on, it will form into scales as you see when a wound dries. Platelets have a lifespan of 7 to 10 days and are also produced in the bone marrow. Serum is pale yellow and transparent, 
containing 90% water and 10% solutes such as serum proteins, organic components, and inorganic salts. They transport proteins, help with blood clotting when necessary, and even aid in the destruction of invading viruses. Another interesting fact is that coconut water can replace serum due to its similar components. During times of war, soldiers often use this method to transfuse patients or as an electrolyte replacement in cases of dehydration. However, directly transfusing coconut water into the body is a thing of the past, and nobody does it anymore. Continuing, let's zoom in 1000 times. Wow, they look really beautiful, don't they? By the way, have you ever tasted blood? This question may sound creepy, like a vampire sucking blood. For those who have tasted it, please let me know your impression of the taste. And I'm sure you know that blood flows throughout the body through a complex and super long system of blood vessels, up to 100,000 kilometers in length. To give you an idea, the blood vessels we have could wrap around the Earth's equator about 2.5 times. Wow, how miraculous is that? But did you know that our body can lose up to 40% of blood and still survive? However, timely blood transfusion is necessary. If the body loses more than 40% of blood, it will go into severe shock. The heart rate will increase to 120 beats per minute, then fainting, loss of consciousness and ultimately lead to death. Blood has four blood types, O, A, B, AB, of which AB blood type is specialized in receiving and O blood type is specialized in donating. Each person will have a different blood type, and each blood type reflects different personalities. Have you ever donated blood voluntarily? If not, please try it. Donating blood is an act of sharing from healthy people to help those in need of blood for treatment and to maintain their lives. All of us, people with normal health, can donate a portion of our blood to save others without any negative impact on our health. Through the video, we have learned about what is in the blood, what are the components of blood and their functions, and especially that we can use our own blood to help those in need. I will stop the video here. If you are curious about any particular topic, please comment below in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to receive notifications when new videos are available. Thank you for your support of Tolo Microscope. Goodbye, and see you in the next video.